I was born in South Africa when I think when I was 17 or or so I used to be like a tomboy but then I started you know getting interested in boys and I would have friends of mine um that we like that I was in high school with you know they would tell me all the stories about starting to explore like sexually the things that they were starting to do I just knew that um deep down I didn't know if it was a fear I just knew that I there was nothing in me that wanted to take anything seriously with anybody to get to the point of like maybe having sex I met a a guy there uh, and you know things kind of went on and on and fast forward to not kind of give all these details we ended up getting married uh and i was i was a virgin obviously because i had never really tried anything i mean i had you know kiss boys and all that touch touch but nothing really beyond that and so i remember standing there in my wedding dress something in me was freaking out i'm like oh my goodness like today i'm gonna have to have sex i don't even know how i'm gonna do that because before it was, it was always like kind of something that I could just say no to. And I always said no to, but now I don't have a right to say, no, I have to have sex with this person. And I just remember just going through that whole day, something in me was just, this panic was rising. So I, you know, went through all that. And then after everybody had left and now it's him and I, and we were, at this resort for seven days. So then it's, you know, go to bed and it's time to do that. And I couldn't do it. Like I literally, I, the panic, the panic that started rising that morning would get so high. Like I literally shoved him off me. I didn't understand what was wrong with me. Like I literally shoved him off me. And then it's like, okay, let's try again. And then we, tried but even he didn't even get to the point of maybe like digitally penetrating i'm sorry if my if like i'm using words that are are too much for the situation but like digitally penetrating or even trying to get his penis anywhere near me because i would the moment i i sort of felt like his hand was going in that direction i would literally shove him off me um And I'll be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let's try again. And then it'll be the same story. And then eventually we just like ended up, he's sitting on the other side of the bed. I'm sitting on the other side of the bed and we're like, what is going on here? That was the first time that I really felt like something is going on. I had an incident when I was 17 years old. I have to go back to that one just for a minute. Uh, When I was 17 years old, I had... um, this thing but that didn't make me panic because then I was like ugh, like I I had a, a sleepover with a friend of mine and then I got my period and she, she she was a high school friend of mine she exclusively used tampons so I so I got my period and I'm like can I have pads she's like I don't have pads I don't even keep them around here and it was a Sunday and then she's like I can wake my dad up and we can go and get I was mortified I'm like no like I don't want your dad to know I got my period so uh, she gave me a box of tampons and we went to the, to, the, to the washroom and I was there like for a whole hour trying to shove this in and shove the tampon in, it wouldn't go in, throw it aside, try another one, it wouldn't, the whole box was bloody. I got nothing in there. And I, at that time we just said, no, nah, it's probably nothing. You, you know, you've never used tampons. Your mother never taught you how to use tampons. So it's nothing. We just left it off and, uh, you know, to my grave embarrassment, she had to go wake up a dad, drive us to the, to the, to the gas station so we could go get pads because I couldn't use tampons. So this is seven years later, and I'm sitting on that bed and I'm married a woman now, and then something, and it dawned on me that something was seriously wrong. So I then um, spent the whole seven days there. We kind of put it aside and it was this, a big elephant in the room. People thought everything was great, but we just knew something was gravely wrong. So I spent that whole seven days crying, alternating between crying and trying to, to go like on my phone. I had a Blackberry back then, that was 2011. So just going through my phone and saying, you know, Googling like can't have sex. Um, and all these things came out. Eventually I came across the term vaginismus. I was like, hmm, 
then I came across this website called vaginismus.com. And they were like, if you pay $300, we'll send you a kit in the mail. And then you can use that kit on yourself. So then my then husband then was like, no, that's probably too hectic. Uh, you just lost your mom. I had just lost my mother. Uh, you are probably just like going through a lot. I don't think that's what it is. Like you're going to the extreme. Let's just give you like time and see how things go with that. So he was going to be, he had gotten a contract to move to Dubai and work there. And I, uh, being a nurse, I was still going to stay behind in South Africa and, and work for like one more year. We were going to be separated for a whole year. Um, came back to see me twice that year. We still couldn't do it. When I moved to Dubai in 2012, the first thing that I, I wanted to do was get the kit, the vaginismus kit. Um, but then my, my then husband was like, let's go to church because we're Christians and you know, it's like, let's go to church and try to find help there. So we went to the church, look, we were part of a church in Dubai, went to the church and spoke to the pastor about the situation. Like we've been married for like over a year now, we were not able to, to have sex. And he said, oh, you know, it's fear and um, fear, is, uh, you know, fear is not from the Lord. Fear is actually a sin because it means you're not trusting God with your situation. So then he then puts us together with this couple who were Nigerian by origin and they worked um, at Medi Clinic in Dubai. Uh, the husband was a doctor and the wife was a nurse. So they're like, you're gonna go to their house because I mean, they're medical people and at the same time they are Christian people. So you, you're gonna get that whole package and you can kind of go and see them. I remember we used to go see them every Tuesday and we go to their house. And I feel like that didn't help me at all. It just reinforced the failure in me. Uh, I, I just went ahead and bought the kit. My anxiety at that point was that much. So it was like sending me a knife in the mail and just saying, go ahead and this is how you, you use it to step yourself. It was never going to happen. Like I was not going to use it. To my husband at the time, he just felt like, you see that, I mean, you're not even trying to use it. I was like, I can't, I just feel like I can't. So I started going to gynecologists in Dubai. Um, I went to like a few different gynecologists. Um, but by that time, I think somewhere in between, in, in between, I came across um, the Women's Therapy Center. And when I started reading, it was like, oh my goodness. Like they, they're like describing me. That's how I felt like I just started reading. For the first time, I wasn't crazy. Somebody knew exactly what was wrong with me and they had found people that could uh, help out. So I then just resolved that I was gonna go there. It is the last thing I ever did. Gynecologists were just really tired of me in Dubai. I made the rounds. One just told me, um, sorry, one told me one time, she's like, um, then you have to also consider like cultural differences. She was um, uh, like a, a Muslim woman. She said to me, I'm telling you now, if you don't do this and you do this thing of jumping around and drum, jumping off gurneys, you, your husband's gonna leave you you're going to have to do this or you're, you're gonna be like a lonely woman with no husband and no children. Is that what you want? And I was like, no, but like what you're suggesting is also not it. I just know in my spirit that it's just not gonna help me. So eventually I came to the point where I just knew that I had to go to New York. That was my one thing that I had to do. Um, so I tried to, um, to get like our insurance at the time to help out with that. And they told me that they couldn't help me. Uh, they wrote me a letter and said they couldn't cover that because of the fact that it was basically like cosmetic. Um, like the thing that I wanted to do, it, my life wasn't in danger from it. It wasn't a disease. It was more like for cosmetic purposes because I guess you can live without sex. Like you, so they, 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 basically refused to help me. They wrote me a letter of rejection. So now I had to raise the money. And uh, it took me like over a year of like uh, just putting money aside, putting money aside. I basically wasn't doing anything because I was leaving for this. I wanted to be cured. And so you know, I was just putting away all the money that I could so I could have money to, to come to New York, which I eventually did on in August of 2015. I don't remember the exact dates. I know it was August of 2015. I remember getting there 
very first time I was so freaked out. I was like, they don't know me. Like, they have been curing all these people out there talking about, you know, uh, so much of a percentage rate of success. They've never met me. That's basic. I was like, I'm the girl who's jumping off gurneys in Dubai. Like they're, they're, they're tired of me over there. Uh, they're probably going to be tired of me here. Like they'll chase me out within two days and be like, you're out of here. Like get out. Um, I think the first day I was just like really out of it. And then the second day, I mean, I think the first day we spoke about things that might have caused it just kind of getting to know each other. And then the, the second day, like that's when we really started. I had to take some Xanax um, the first, the second day, uh, really freaking out. Um, uh, and all, I can't really tell you exactly what it was. I just know that it felt right. Like the role that Dr. Lauren played, the role that Dr. Ross played, the role that, that Dr. Ditsa played, uh, like it was, um, you know, Dr. Ditsa was kind of that person that was firm, like, okay, you have to, to do this now. now. And Dr. Ross was kind of like my soft spot, like when I was feeling like, oh, like I was freaking out. She's like, it's okay, it's okay. And Dr. Lauren was kind of like, you know, the hands that did the work, like in terms of just like touching down there and doing it. And while I was holding on to Dr. Ross's hand, while, you know, um, Dr. Ditsa on the side was encouraging me in their own way, it just worked. It was just you know, it's just like the work they do. And I guess some, some sparkle dust or something, it just worked. And oh, I'm just really grateful for, um, yeah, for everything.